What was your first assignment together? In 98, Gabe and I were both assigned to the International Terrorism Unit. You were working to capture Eric Romer. Yes, we'd been following Romer for two years. In 99, we were sent to Costa Rica to find a missing undercover agent. We discovered a sophisticated drug operation. While Gabe shut down the plantations, I infiltrated Romer's lab complex. Gabe got us out of there. He was there with a the chopper and lifted us out. I see. And since he helped you fake your death, what have you been doing? Mostly I've been following a woman named Mara Aramov. A Soviet agent. She was involved with the agency somehow, but we never understood her connection. She seemed to work for the agency, for the Russians, but also helped us, like she was toying with us. I don't understand. She's good at covering her tracks. But since she thought I was dead, she wasn't watching for me. Probably the most interesting place I found her was in your office, talking to you. Wait! You can't come in here like this! You- These are officers from the Special Prosecutor's Office, Mr. Haddon, with a warrant for your life. I'll monitor your progress from the rendezvous point. Right. Guess what? Bad news. I just got a call from Lawrence. We've been called to testify before a Senate committee investigating the siphon filter scare. Great. You've been asked to testify because of your direct knowledge of this agency and its connection to the siphon filter virus. As senior officer, Mr. Logan, I'll begin with you. For the record, describe how you first became involved. The agency had been tracking down an international terrorist named Eric Romer. One of my men went to investigate Romer's drug operation in Costa Rica. When we lost contact, Leon and I were sent in to get him out. Leon had discovered that Romer was readying a cargo plane for escape. I got there just in time. Romer had escaped. Yeah, Romer escaped. Mr. Mujari, in your deposition you testified that your first contact with the agency was in South Africa. Yes. In 1984 there was a viral outbreak in one of the mines. I was sent by the ANC to investigate. I had found my brothers, but I would not be setting them free. The virus was a strain I had never seen. I kept the samples. How did the agency acquire them? I did some lab work for the World Health Organization. Miss Lepan was assigned to investigate the same outbreak as I. She came to my lab and saw the South African samples. Which you gave to her? I thought nothing of it. She wanted to have them tested by the agency labs. I see. Do you recall which labs? Of course. It was Farcom. Miss Zing, according to your affidavit, you met Gabriel Logan in 1987. Is that correct? Yes. I was in Kabul, Afghanistan on a covert assignment for the MSS. The Chinese Secret Service. That's correct. Our goal was to undermine the Soviet occupation. Eventually, Gabe recruited me into the agency. Yes. To help him with murder, assassination, arms dealing, acts of terrorism, you should Not Gabe and I. We worked for the greater good. We never committed acts of terrorism. I'm almost there. 
How much time do I have left to plant these explosives? Not long. My MI6 team is standing by. Recon has trucks being loaded from the South Cargo Bay. I'm sending Nigel to check them out. Copy that. Heading into the North Cargo Hold now. That was our first exposure to the siphon filter virus. And at the time, we had no idea that Romer was about to be secretly coerced into working for our superiors. Trust, Miss Zing, would seem to be in short supply in your agency. It got to be that way, yes. But you trusted Gabriel Logan. Of course I trusted Gabe. If you're gonna be in a firefight, there's no one better than Gabe Logan. Half my team is gone. IRA? They got wind of this shipment somehow. Probably decided they could use the virus for themselves. Who's their contact? Don't know. But we've got to get to those trucks before they do. Let's move. She's gone. She'd be alive today if we hadn't dragged her into Teresa this. Teresa died the way she lived, doing what she believed in. In any case, you could hardly have stopped her. No one could. She gave her life for mine. How can I live with that? The same way I will. By surviving. By not giving up. By fighting for what you believe in. It's not over yet. Secretary of State, when the administration falls, you would have the power. No. I have other plans for Gabriel Logan. Hearings have been scheduled, and I need someone to blame. There is no conspiracy, no arms consortium, only a traitor acting alone or with his friends. I ask you again, Mr. Logan, as an operative in this unnamed agency, did you ever assassinate a world leader? No, never. Take the shot, Gabe. She held men are on their way up. Finish 
eat. It's already over, Mara. Okay, got it. Thanks. Mara's gone. Apparently security didn't see anything. Cameras have been wiped. Figures. I guess your first task as agency chief will be tracking her down once and for all. No. My first job is rebuilding from the ground up, with people I trust. Great. Just what we need, a bunch of raw recruits to train. How about you, Teresa? Looking for a job? No thanks. I'm heading back to the desert for some R&R. &R. Besides, the siphon filter operation is finally dead. You don't need me. Interpol has tracked down the last of the Project Coven sites. They've all been abandoned or destroyed. Siphon filter is destroyed, but Mara's out there somewhere. Where to begin? The same place we always begin, by looking for the truth and eliminating anything that tries to stop us. That's it. We've stopped them. It's the last of the virus. Not yet, but any second now. I first met Benton in 87. I was an army ranger working a UN border patrol outside Kabul. Benton claimed to be a CIA operative. Yes, the CIA was planning an arms shipment over the border. Covert aid to the rebels. I was tagged to protect the convoy. Two clicks past the border, we came under heavy fire. From Soviet forces? No, Afghans. Benton told me they were a splinter group trying to keep us from reaching Kabul. The attack wiped out my entire squad except for Benton and my CEO, Ellis. The three of us cobbled together a single working truck. Benton drove, Ellis was our demolition expert, and I was on point. I was determined to make it to Kabul. When we reached the city, I asked Ellis and Benton to stay with the truck while I scouted our route. Where you met Leon Zing for the first time. She was about to be ambushed by a Soviet patrol. I saved her life. In return, she created a diversion so I could get into the city. 
On our way to the rendezvous point, I spotted more trouble. Armor coming right at us. I'm gonna try to disable it. You stay here with the truck, I'll give you a signal when it's clear. Copy that. When our contact finally showed up, it wasn't an Afghan rebel, but a Soviet agent. Benton shot him dead and ordered us to leave the weapons for the rebels. A Soviet agent? <laughs> so you're testifying that the CIA was supplying arms to the Soviets? Benton wasn't CIA. He worked for the agency. He told me to forget what I had seen, for my own sake. And you did not see Leon Zing again? Not while in Kabul. I assumed that she completed her mission and got out. Leon could always take care of herself. Yeah. Maggie, Weisinger's gone. Can you track her? No, and there's more reinforcements heading your way. Blast! You don't have time to go after her. It's okay, she left me a disk. It should have all the data on Siphon and the consortium that we need. Radio Gabe and tell him I'm heading to DC. I'll relay the data to you en route. Lawrence can start downloading in about 20 minutes. Copy. Relay satellite is ready to go. LZ coming up. There's a secluded hill just south of your position, set down there. Communications are down, so they don't know we're coming. Is the vaccine ready? Yes. There are several test subjects still alive, but I expect Silvers will be rounding them up soon for execution. Give each one an injection and tell them to get out of there. Now can you tell me why it is, Mr. Logan, that every agent Every witness who can corroborate your testimony is either dead or missing. I'm telling you the truth. I have a different version of the truth for you. There is no conspiracy, no arms consortium, only a traitor acting alone or with his friends. No, you're wrong. You let Romer escape in Costa Rica because he was working for you. You killed Benton, Stevens, Jason Chance, and Teresa Lapan because they stood in your way. You, Mr. Logan, are guilty of treason, terrorism, and murder. No, you're wrong. Gabe is telling the truth. I don't understand. My records seem to indicate a coroner's report states... Teresa was injured, not killed. We knew that whoever was behind the agency would be watching us closely. I faked my death so that I could investigate without interference. I see. Forgive me if I seem somewhat surprised. Very well. You will understand if I wish to hear what Miss Lapan has to say in private. Of course. Now, before we get to your extraordinary resurrection, I'd like to get some background information. Sure. How did you become involved with the agency? Well, I joined the ATF right out of college. My first mission came when the FBI discovered a survivalist compound in northern Montana, and I was given the task of advanced recon. I hadn't been in the ATF long, and I was still pretty green, but I knew the areas surrounding the compound and was put on point. So Logan murdered two FBI agents. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Nobody around here is who they seem to be, are they? Turns out they were NSA. They had cooked up a bunch of lies so they could go in and murder the entire compound with impunity. Continue. Gabe told me to get out, but I wasn't going to let the NSA murder Oakton's family. I waited till dark and headed in. 